Hi, I'm going to be reading from Tangerine, Saturday, November 4th, on page 170. Back in October, when we all visited the Tangerine Nursery, Luis Stephanie said to me, you should come again. I think he meant it. I, I know I meant it when I said I wanted to, but since that day, Teresa and Tino have had all of our project meetings in class. Anyway, I decided to take charge of the situation. I wanted to go back to the nursery, and so I did. Mom drove me through Tangerine on a sleepy Saturday morning. I had no problem remembering the way. Out through the groves, down the long driveway, past the house, to the Kwanzaa hut. She said, are you, spo are you sure these people are expecting you? Yeah. What kind of building is that? It's called a Kwanzaa hut. Is it safe? Mom, it's built by the army. It'll withstand a direct hit by a 20 megaton bomb. What goes on in there? Is that their office? It's more like Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory. Please, Paul, give me a break. I'm worried about you out there. Mom, it's a citrus nursery. The worst thing that could happen to me is I'd overdose on vitamin C. Just don't touch anything, Rusty. You haven't had your booster shot. Okay, what time should I come back? I'll call you. All right, be careful. Mom pulled away. I walked up to the door of the Quonset hut and knocked. There was no answer. Then from behind me, I heard, Fisherman, what are you doing here? It wasn't a friendly greeting. I turned and saw Tino and Luis coming out of the house with coils of thin black hose wrapped around their shoulders, like a bandolero like bandolera ammo belts. Tino and I get along okay on the soccer team, but as long as I know my place and stay in it. But he was he has little use for me away from the team, and he has no use for me at all in science class. I saw it and said, I wanted to find out more about the nursery. Luis said, come back sometime. So I did. What, you don't have phones at Lake Windsor Downs? Luis said, it's all right, Tino. I invited him to come back, and he's come. He pointed to a pile of black hoses on the ground. You can grab some of those and work with us. I wrapped a bandolera of hose around my shoulder and followed them. We walked around the Quonset hut, through the rows of adult trees and out the baby trees, the golden dawn tangerines. We laid out all of Luis's hose, then all of Tino's, then all of mine, up and down the rows of little trees. Then we went back and loaded up again from the pile. We continued to haul and lay out the hose for three hours until every row had a black rubber strip running down it. We ba walked back again through the adult grove. By this time, Tino sat down on a crate between two large trees. Luis pointed to two more crates, which I hauled between me, between the trees for us to sit on. He reached up, pulled off a tangerine and tossed it to Tino. Then he tossed one to me. We all sucked them down hungrily. Luis pulled down three more. I hadn't said a word for hours until Luis asked me, so how do you like the tangerine business? I like it a lot. Tino snorted. Is that right? What do you like about it? I knew the answer to that right away. The way it smells. I like the way it smells out here. I held up my tangerine. I guess I like how these taste too. Luis smiled. I asked him, what's the best thing about it for you? Luis stood up to get us three more. When he sat down, he answered, just like you, the way it smells out here, that scent, it's like nothing else in the world. Luis looked at me intensely, but he spoke softly, almost musically, almost tearfully. You know, I walk out here in the morning sometimes, and I fall on my knees, and I weep right into the ground. I'm overcome by the beauty of it all. I've tried to describe that scent all around in the air. I've tried to give it a name, but the closest I can come is, it's the scent of a golden dawn. Luis looked away. Tina was staring at him with reverence, with no trace of the gray of the hard guy face he usually carries around. We rested for five more minutes and then went back to the baby trees. Luis gave each of us a small sharp hand clipper, which we called a tangerine clipper. We proceeded to crawl up, crawl up and down the rows, slicing a hole in the black hose next to each tree. It was a back-breaking, knee-scraping, glasses-fogging work. I could feel the sun doing damage on the back of my neck and the backs of my legs. We didn't break again till we had sliced a thousand holes in a thousand spots. Then we sprawled out again between the trees with our tangerines. Luis and Tino were hot and tired, but I was more like in critical condition. Luis said, I think that's all for you today. Tino added, yeah, fisherman, you don't look too good. You look like a lobster special. Luis pointed at the Quonset hut. Take him inside, Tino. Get him some of that first aid spray. Tino actually took my arm, helped me up, and guided me to the hut. He found a purple aerosol can, shook it, and said, Close your eyes. He sprayed a cold white foam on the back of my neck, my arms, and my knees. I sat carefully on the top of the desk and said, Thanks. Can I use the telephone? Yeah, go ahead. Mom answered the phone after one ring. I said, Mom, I'm ready to be picked up. Are you all right, Paul? Yeah. You sound hurt. No. 
I'll be there in 15 minutes. I hung up and said to Tina, so where's Teresa today? She's out with her daddy. She's helping him fill out some paperwork at the county building. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's getting more into that now. She's learning how to run the family business. Tina paused. You know, I was thinking, Teresa's really busy with that stuff, so maybe you should do the final report for the science group, you know, on, on a computer. He nodded like he was agreeing with himself. Teresa thinks so, too. In fact, it's her idea. Sure, I can do that. I waited for Tina to look at me. We could have a project meeting at my house if you'd like. I can show you the types of graphics we have on my dad's computer. You know, pie charts and stuff. We could design the whole thing. Yeah, well, let me talk to Teresa about that. I slid off the desk and started to walk awkwardly toward the front door. I felt like my skin was too tight for my body. Tino laughed. That's hard work, huh? Yeah, I don't know how people can work out in the sun all day. I wouldn't make it as a fruit picker. I'd be dead. Tino nodded. Yeah, well, you do what you gotta do. I never did that, because I never had to. He started to follow me down the length of the hut. My daddy had to. Luis did did it, too. But he did it because he wanted to. He used to beg to go on trips with Daddy and Tio Carlos. He picked oranges down in Orlando. He picked tangerines over on Merritt Island. That's how his knee got messed up. I opened the front door enough to look out for Mom. Tina went on. You don't pick tangerines. You clip them with one of those clippers. Luis was doing that when he fell out of a tree. He was 12 years old back then. He landed on his kneecap, cracked it, and stabbed himself in the hand with the clippers. Daddy picked him up and drove him to the hospital. They bandaged up, up, they bandaged up his hand right, but Luis didn't say anything about his knee because it wasn't looking too bad, and he was afraid that our mama wouldn't let him go picking anymore. The next morning, his knee looked like a soccer ball. He had messed up his cartilage so bad they had to operate. They had to put a pin in there, too. He couldn't walk at all for about two months. And he was right about Mama. Mama told him he could never go out picking again. Tino nodded slowly, remember. Anyway, after Mama died, Luis couldn't go anywhere. He had to stay at home with Teresa and me. Tino pushed past me, pushed past me through the door. I followed him outside. He said... It worked out okay for Luis, though. He became a genius at horticulture. There's nobody better in Florida. I waited to see if that was all he had to say. It wasn't. Luis played soccer, you know, at Tangerine Middle School. At the high school, too. No kidding? Yeah, he was good. We used to go watch him. What position did he play? Tina looked surprised at the question. What else could he play? He was the goalie. The goalie? Yeah, they had to put him in there because he was handicapped. I looked at Tino to see if he was mocking me. He wasn't. He was just making a conversation. He was in the nicest mood that I had ever seen him in. I figured it was my chance to clear my conscience once and for all. I said, Hey, do you remember when you guys got busted at the carnival? Yeah, what about it? Well, I'm the one who ratted you out. They accused me... They accused some of the Lake Windsor soccer players of wrecking that exhibit. The axe man. I'm the one that told him it was the Tangerine Middle soccer players. Tino nodded slowly. Then he said... Turn around. What? Turn around. Looked over there. I turned around and looked out toward the house. Suddenly, I felt a swift kick in my backside. It made me hop forward about a foot. I turned back and looked at Tino. He had a sly smile on his face. Hey, he said, if any of your Lake Windsor homeboys ever asked you what happened when I found out, you tell them about that. Mom's car appeared around the corner. She drove through the shade of the house into the sunlight and up to where we were standing. She waved to Tino as I climbed in. Tino returned the wave and then walked around the Quonset hut to go back to work. What did Tino just do to Joey? Not Joey, Paul. Thanks for coming by. Have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe.